Welcome to the fifth lecture in module four. In this lecture, we'll talk about expressions and control structures that exist in the Ruby programming language. The first thing you need to understand is that the syntax in Ruby is very expression oriented. And what does that mean? Well, that means that everything in Ruby is treated as an expression. And this is different from a lot of other programming languages. So uh, uh, what that means is that every expression, every statement, everything you write in Ruby evaluates to something. As an example, the control structures for conditional and, and loop uh, structures in other languages typically don't evaluate to anything. In Ruby, they have a value, and the value they assume is the last expression that's evaluated as a part of that structure. So uh, if you go to IRB and uh, type a quick if statement that I'll show you, you'll see that it actually evaluates to something. It returns a value. So uh, there are if case and for structures in Ruby that we're going to see in this lecture. Again, all of them return a value. Let's look at the conditional expressions first. So Ruby has uh, conditional execution, very similar to other programming languages. It's if, expression, there's code, and then there's an end statement. And so what's a little different in some other programming languages is that there's an end statement associated with that if. It's not in the, the, the piece of code that executed is not enclosed in brackets. So um, in, this, uh, in this if statement, the code is executed if and only if that conditional expression that I show there, only if it evaluates to something other than false or nil. You can extend this with else clauses. And in this example, we have an if statement code. There's an else if. And the thing to notice, that's not misspelled. The else if only has one e in it. So it's E-L-S-I-F. And so in this case, what I show you here, the first expression, expression one is tested. If it's true, the code below it is executed. Otherwise, the next one is tested. If that one's true, the code below it is executed. Otherwise, if both of those tests false, the else portion of this statement would be executed. This is very typical to other programming languages. But there's also a shorthand way that Ruby has that uh, for, for uh, executing a conditional statement using if that treats the if as if it were an expression modifier. And here's the syntax, code, if, expression. In other words, this code that appears before the if is executed if the expression after it tests true. Very shorthand way of expressing uh, a simple conditional expression. Now Ruby also has this question mark colon operator that exists in C and C++. It's not used that often. It's there. If you're used to it in C and C++, you can use it. But it's probably a better idea to use the code that I show above. It's a little bit more readable. Now, there are a number of comparison operators that are typically used with uh, either conditionals or looping structures. And so we've got the first one I show here, the two equal signs. That's used for testing for equality. The bang equal is used to, to test if something is not equal, to if the left and right hand operands are not equal. We've seen this next operator, this equal tilde, that's used to test if a string matches a particular regular expression. The bang tilde, if a, spring, if a string does not match a particular regular expression. And then this last one, three equal signs, that's used with case statements in Ruby. So Ruby has a case statement. I'm not going to go over it because it's not very common to use it. But this is a, a case structure, and that operator is called the case equality operator. So just wanted you to be familiar with that. Now, in addition to this standard set of conditionals in Ruby, there are some others that have been added to increase the readability of the language. And again, recall that the uh, philosophy of Ruby is to, to make programming fun, to make it easy for you to express things. And so this is a bit of what's called syntactic sugar. You don't need this, but sometimes it makes your code a little bit more re uh, readable. So rather than using an if statement, you can use an until statement. And the, um, the syntax here is until this expression tests true, you're going to continue to execute this code. That's what that means. So in other words, um, it'll continue to execute until something other than false or nil is returned by that expression I show there. You cannot attach any else clauses to this. So you'll see this until uh, statement or until uh, conditional, I should say, used quite extensively in, in Ruby code. Now let's talk about iteration. 
Ruby has uh, a for loop structure, and uh, it's got the syntax that I show you for. You name a particular variable that serves as the loop index, in, and then over a collection, and then Ruby will iterate over any enumerable collection. And we'll talk about collections in the next lecture, but basically this goes through each element in that collection and executes the body of the code over that collection. There's also an exit condition loop. So the first loop I've shown here is an entry condition loop. In other words, the body always gets executed at least once. In a while loop, that's an exit condition loop. Only while that condition is true will that body be executed. And so if it tests false the first time around, or nil the first time around, the body's never executed. Now, just like the if statement, there's a, a opposite to the while is the until. So until condition body of gets executed until that condition tests true. So both of these last two that I've shown you are exit condition loops. The first of them, the while loop, iterates over the body while the condition is true. The second iterates over the body of the loop until the condition is true. So these are all available. Um, these are the two conditional, the, the most common conditionals, I should say, and the most common looping structures that are available to you in the Ruby programming language. Now in Ruby, it's a lot more common. You don't see loop structures used very often, and that's because it's very common in Ruby to use something called an iterator, and we'll discuss these in the next lecture. Um, so again, iterators are quite commonly used in place of uh, both of all three of those loop structures that I've showed you. So we'll uh, talk about that in the next lecture. This completes the fifth lecture in Module 4.